I came back, I believe it was 84, and did the angle with Tito, broke his leg. This was before I even knew about WrestleMania, but then it started. And George Scott, my booker from Carolinas, he always used to say he thought up the name WrestleMania. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know why he would lie about it, but uh, he was Vince's right hand man along with Pat Patterson too, who just passed away. So, yeah, you WrestleMania one, you knew that was going to be a big deal, and they got Liberace coming in there and Cindy Lopler and. Billy Martin and Muhammad Ali, and, and I got to meet all these guys. And uh, Muhammad Ali, by the way, other than George Foreman, was one of my favorites. I love George Foreman, too, especially in that comeback when he was 50-some years old. God, you knew. You knew you were on a, setting on a big, big thing. And that was the first pay-per-view for WWF back then. I heard that they put so much money in it. This is what Georgia told me, Scott, that after they paid everybody and boom, 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 and, but they branded their name, WrestleMania, that they really just broke even. Then after that, of course, they made a ton of money. But that first one, they, sh they went for the gusto and, and it worked out, you know. Were you ever worried at this time when Vince McMahon was taking talent from a lot of the promotions, did you ever have any threats of being blackballed if you went there? Well, I went to Vince and I asked him why he was doing this. Why are we going to LA? Why are we going to Dallas? Why are we going to all these other places that, that these are territories and, and these people I work for and they're friends of mine and promoters. And he goes, Greg, he goes, my, my, the WWF is set up to be nationwide. I'm not trying to put anybody else out of business. I need to go nationwide, not just the East Coast, you know, between Baltimore and Bangor, Maine, and Pittsburgh and Buffalo. He was just really in that area, Philly and Baltimore. He goes, I need to go nationwide. And he and he got he went around and they didn't give him this TV time. He went and bought TV time in California and Illinois and everywhere. He was set up to go big. He had to go big. And you know what? I understood it. And it wasn't like I'm going in against my friends. And he also told me, don't worry about going anywhere. You're here forever. And I basically was there for a long time. Um, you know, you feel a little bad about it, but, you know, he explained it to me that this was a nationwide thing. WWF, and then it became a worldwide thing. So it's all good. It's all good. Can you talk about the transition from working with Vince McMahon Sr. to Vince McMahon Jr.? You said you had met him the first time at the Garden, you said in 1975. But now you're back here almost 10 years later, and you're working with him, the son. What was the difference between the two, the father and son? Well, Vince Jr.'s cocky. Vincent Mann Sr. was one of the nicest guys you ever, and down-earth guy you'd ever meet. And he loved his talent. And he was almost too nice. He hated, he told me, he had to let somebody go. And he goes, Greg, you know, it's just, it's hard for me to tell somebody they got to go. He told me I had to go, but he gave me a starting date nine months later where you can come back. So it was in and out, in and out. But certain guys, uh, like Stan Stasiak, you remember that name? Yeah. He says he was the hardest guy ever. Uh, I, I told him he had to go. So he was just a real soft-hearted guy. Now, Vince Jr. was a little different. I mean, he was, he's a chip off the old block, but he wasn't as sensitive as his dad was. His whole generation, but he, he was, he still is intelligent son of a gun. And, and uh, he put this whole thing together. He knew what he wanted, along with Pat Patterson and, uh, these guys, they they love the business too. So, 
different personalities. You know, I used to make trips with Vince when he was still the announcer, but when he came, he came to boss, he had to, I understand this, he had to distance himself from the guy. You can't just, I'm not just a TV announcer, I'm the boss. So he was a little hard to get to. You had to make an appointment or whatever. Chip off the old block, but his dad was a, a sweetheart. So that was the difference. When you're riding around with Vince McMahon Jr., which everyone knows now is just Vince McMahon, basically, the newer newer generation does. Mm-hmm. Do you guys ever talk about any plans about when he would when he would take the company or if, if he was going to take the company or what vision was for the future? Did he ever talk about anything like that? No, we just had a good time drinking driving and, and talking and we're just getting to know each other but his dad he died because something it was something to do with he got cancer of the prostate or something I'm not sure exactly what it was but something down here and he knew he had a limited time on earth left I remember we always had a dinner every three weeks and he he invited a lot of the top guys I was always part of that, me and the Grand Wizard and stuff. And he knew he only had a short time left. Like, there's something wrong with his, I don't want to say what it was because I'm, I'm not sure, but because of health, he passed away. And uh, that's when Vince, of course, took over. He was ready to take over now, you know. Do you have anything you want to say to all the fans and the new fans that are now watching from these interviews and the A&E stuff that are now discovering Greg Valentine? Yeah, well, if you haven't if you haven't watched my career and my matches, it's all over. Uh, besides these, these YouTube interviews and stuff, I'm all over the place. Some old stuff from the 70s, wrestling with Flair, wrestling against Ric Flair, wrestling with Wahoo. All the stuff from Tito and Beefcake, the Dream Team era with the Bulldogs and the Rujo brothers and then the new Dream Team and then then the Rhythm and Blues thing and then all the stuff I did in the independence. But uh, yeah, if you're just getting introduced to me, you know, you got a lot of material to watch and I hope you enjoy it because I worked my yin yang off and I enjoyed every minute of it. I loved it. Second generation wrestler. I think, you know, Wahoo, like I said, Wahoo, I wasn't all that tough when I got into it, but Wahoo beat me till I became tough. All the great matches I had with Tito, you gotta watch those. And uh, Ronnie Garvin, I love the Slugfest. I have a Ronnie Garvin and it hurt, but I loved it. I'm going to be out soon. Can't wait to get out there and meet all my fans on a personal basis at the comic cons and wrestling conventions when they open that all back up. It'll all be good. Can't wait. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. And thanks again for you know doing this and, and sharing so much of your time and memories uh, with us at Title Match Network and all the fans around the world. Oh, yeah. Man, I thank you, too, for getting in touch with me and, and uh This has been a a real pleasure, and I hope we can do some more of it.